Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I want to thank all of you who joined the channel since our last video. I know I took a bit of a break. Unfortunately, there was some IRL stuff that happened and I promised you that I would be coming out with a lot more content. And it's true, here I am. I'm going to be making two videos a week from now on. So please subscribe if you find any of what I talk about helpful. I want to thank all of you who joined the channel recently. Basically, we went from like 300 subs to like over a thousand subs and we hit the monetized threshold. So we're now monetized. However, if you follow my pie hole video, I don't think that's going to affect this channel very much. So if you want to support the channel, you can like the video, you can comment, you can share it. And if you want to go above and beyond, you can go and donate directly. You can buy me a coffee. This is my official page. And I want to give a huge thanks to all the three supporters that donated Eric, John twice. John did it twice, which is insane. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and some random person that just says somebody, I have no idea who this guy is, but I want to I, like, I want to give you a huge thank you. I want to build this community. I want to help you take control back and the way I'm going to be doing this through this channel is by showcasing free and open source software, which can replace paid and subscription alternatives. Last time we left off with the Raspberry Pi and the NVMe SSD board. What are we going to do with that? We are going to be building a NAS server. Now you're probably wondering what the hell is a NAS? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And the name is a little bit misleading because a lot of people think that it's just a place for you to store stuff. And it's true, you know, for the most part, a NAS server is for storing files. However, because of technologies like Docker, you're able to expand the functionality beyond just storage. You can actually use it as a full blown server and host services on the fairly cheap. And you can use the storage for both personal storage and, you know, store information for these softwares that I'm going to be showing you how to host on your own moving forward. So remember a network attached storage is basically a server that you run locally and you can access it from your Wi-Fi. So the server is going to be hosted on your network. And if you connect via Wi-Fi or ethernet, you're going to have access to that storage server and all of your devices are going to be able to share that connection and share files in between. And because of the functionality of it, you're able to expand it and host services beyond just file sharing, which is amazing. Now for the Raspberry Pi, I did a little bit, I did something different. You see, I bought an ammo box and then in this ammo box, I added a four terabyte NAS quality hard drive so that now we have six terabytes of storage as compared to just two terabytes. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be migrating my laptop that I've been using as a server for the past two years, all to this Raspberry Pi five. And it's going to be super exciting. Um, so let's go. We're going to be using this install script and basically for NAS operating systems for the Raspberry Pi, there is two main competitors. There is open media vault and then there is, um, what's it called? Oh my God. Casa OS. It's called Casa OS. Sorry. I forgot about it. Open media vault is the old kid in the block and then Casa OS and there's some other variants are the newer kids in the block and they both do the same thing. We're going to be using this install script right here from the open media vault plugin developers. Now, all you need to do is go down here and copy one of these commands. It will download and install script and run it. Now I want to be very clear. This will erase everything on the raspberry Pi and it needs to be a server operating system. So if we go to the terminal, and then we SSH into the Raspberry Pi 5. Now the operating system on the Raspberry Pi 5 has to be a server. It can't be the, the Raspberry Pi desktop. It needs to be a server. This is a default installation. We can just do sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. Okay. So it appears everything is up to date. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to copy over one of these commands. You can use wget or curl. Let's just choose the first one. Let's go to the terminal and just to make sure that this is the Raspberry Pi 5, let's do a NeoFetch. And you can see this is a Debian. It is Arch 64 Raspberry Pi 5 Model B. Um, and right now the server operating system is only using 141 megabytes of RAM, which is great. You know, there's a lot of bloated stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste that command and hit enter. 
Now this will reset the Raspberry Pi and anything you may may have done on it. So it is a good idea to start fresh. Now it doesn't always delete everything, but it's just a good rule of hand to start fresh when you're making or installing Open Media Vault. The installation script is done. Okay, so it is saying the system will reboot now. Okay, let's see if it did. Okay, let's. Yeah, it did. So it did close the connection because we are no. It is rebooting and we're no longer connected. So I can see that the box has restarted. So let's copy this IP address and now we're able to access it via this IP address on the browser. It now rebooted completely. All you need to do is go to the IP address and uh, make sure it's HTTP, not HTTPS, and you're going to get the default login screen. This is pretty sweet. It, the background seems a lot different than the Open Media Vault 6, which is good. And I think that the default login is admin and then Open Media Vault. And then this will allow you to log in Obviously, the first thing that you need to do is change the password. So we're going to be changing the password because we don't want to use the default one. OK, so we have changed the password and we are get we got a notification that the password has been changed. The only thing that we're going to be focusing on at this point of the tutorial is enabling Docker because Docker doesn't come enabled by default. So we need to go to um, I believe it's uh, system. We need to go to OMV extras. And we need to enable the Docker repo. And then save. Once we enable the Docker repo, we need to install the Docker Compose plugin for Open Media Vault. And this is something that the Open Media Vault team already did. So we're going to be looking for Docker Compose. And this is it. Select it and go to the install button, which is a download button. It's kind of weird. And here's what I mean about like little things get complicated. You need to click confirm and then click yes. It's going to show you a shell of what's happening, basically as if you were in the terminal. Uh, all you need to do is wait for it to be to complete. Now that it has completed, we can close it and then OK, so now that the Docker Compose plugin has been installed, let's configure the dashboard before we create a share. Um, I believe that we need to go to the settings page. It's telling us to do that right here. And then you select what do you want to see in your dashboard? Well, I want to see everything. I mean, I want to see CPU utilization, containers that are running, the temperatures of the disk, and then like the file systems. Do you want to see them in a table or in a grid? I want to see them in a grid. I want to see everything in a grid and then click save and you can now see a bunch of data about your server. Let's go over here and let's now that we have the dashboard set up, let's format the four terabyte disk into an EXT format. So go here, go to storage, go to disk um, and then select file systems. And then we want to create another file system. So let's click on the plus button and we're going to be use, choosing ext4 is the most stable one. And then let's create, let's select the four terabyte hard drive and then save. Now this command will run because it is a four terabyte device and it is a physical disk that's spinning. This is going to take a hot minute. So I open another tab and while that's happening, let's create a test share to see how we can access like folder information through our network, right? So the first thing you need to do is go to the uh, storage again, go to share folders and let's create a share folder called test. And then this is just so that we can upload and download stuff, but you should be able to create as many share folders as you want. Let's select the two terabyte NVMe SSD as the file system and then save. Now, once you have this set up, you need to go, you need to select it. You need to go here to permissions and then your users, you need to give it read and write access. So let's click save. And once we do that, we need to confirm all of the changes we made in this big 
yellow banner by going here and clicking on the checkbox and apply. Yes, we want to apply it. Okay, the configuration has been applied. Let's check how the ter uh, the four terabyte disk is doing. It's going through five six thousand out of thirty thousand, so it still has a bit to go. So now that we created a share folder, let's go to services. Let's go to SMB and let's go to shares. And now we're going to be creating that SMB connection to the network share. So click on the plus, uh, select which share folder you want to do, you want to use. Um, you can select whether it's public or not. Basically, do you want people to be able to access it when they connect to your Wi-Fi immediately? Or do you want them to have some sort of user account? This is great for managing users within your family. Like let's say you have a child, maybe you want to limit how much they can upload and how much like which folders they have access to and which they don't. That way you can keep like super important financial like information in one directory and then like another directory for your kid. So so they can upload and download stuff to from school or like video games and things of that nature. So that's pretty good. Um, we don't want it to be public. We just want it to be accessible through an account. Um, you can make it read only so that people can only read the files and copy them, but they can't add or remove. Um, it is going to be browsable. Uh, let's enable the recycle bin. So when you delete something, it's going to be in the recycle bin for a couple of days. Mm, the retention time on the recycle bin, let's make it seven days, like a full week. If it hasn't been restored by then, just wipe it. Uh, unrestricted file size, that's good because you don't know if you're going to be uploading one gigabyte files or 20 gigabyte files. That all depends, right? Like if you have a 4K video, like let's say you have whatever reasons for you to have an, a 4K video. Maybe you have a 30 gigabyte file. Maybe you don't. So you never know. Okay. Uh, hide the dot files. I don't like that. I want to see the hidden directories and hidden files. Okay. Uh, extended attributes. No idea what this is. It's, since it's not selected by default, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, store D DOS attributes. I am just going to leave everything else as is. Okay. What does it say here? Extra options. Nope. Click save. Okay, so here it is. I was waiting for this yellow banner. It is so delayed, it's funny, um, but I, it is what it is, I guess. So we are going to be confirming the changes. Let's see how our big hard drive is doing. Okay, um, the, <laughs> the terminal just ran off screen, so we have no idea to keep track. Oh, wait, yeah, we do. Oh, thank God. I don't know why it's like in this one line, it just stays there. But we're pretty close to finishing. Uh, it is at the um, 29,000 something. So it's pretty close to done. Okay, so now that we added the share, we should be able to see in our network something called tests. Um, so let's go to our files. Now, this will work across all operating systems, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. So let's go to our file browser. Let's go to other locations. It is searching. Hmm. It's not displaying. So let's see. Okay. So I had a windows share at this same exact address when I was testing things out, but it doesn't have the same credentials anymore. So I don't know if it's going to uh, mess that up. So let's delete that. And let's add this server again and then click connect. Okay. It failed to retrieve the share. That's really interesting. I'm not sure why. Okay. I'm going to debug why the share is not appearing and then I'm going to report right back. You're not going to believe it, but I'm, I'm kind of dumb. So I forgot to enable SMB to begin with, which is insane. So I'm really sorry about that. So what you need to do is click SMB, click settings and enable it. Because if you don't enable it, you're not going to see it. That is a problem on my end. I am really, really sorry. Um, enable home directories. Yes. And for the most part, we're good to go. So if we save this, okay, 
You can't share home directories apparently. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. Let's go and save it. Okay, now that SMB is enabled, we can confirm the changes and now we should be able to see the network shares that we created earlier. I am so sorry. This is like rookie move, but at the end of the day, it's almost midnight. So I'm probably just running out of juice at this point. Okay, now that it has been applied, let's go back to our files and let's try to connect again. Oh my God, it worked. Who would have thought? And now we're able to see this. And then when we click on it, it's going to ask us for our credentials. Uh, we are a registered user. However, I haven't created any other users. I'm going to show you how to do that because you don't really want to be using the admin account for anything other than administering things in the server. So let's go over here. Uh, let's go to users. Let's create a user. So we have the previous user that we created. Uh, when we created the Raspberry Pi and Flash Raspberry Pi OS light on it. Before you create the user, create a group. And then this group is going to have access to the test. Let's just call it test group folder. And then let's just click save. I guess you could have created the user first and then the group and but Open Media Vault's UI is a little bit funky. Okay, so this is going to be John. And then um, password is going to be password for simplicity's sake. Password. And basically, we're just going to create the user. And then we're going to go here and we're going to look for uh, the test group right here. And save. And now we need to make sure that that group that we created has access to the share. So share here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually storage file system or sorry, share folders. I keep messing up. I'm so sorry. And then click on permissions and then you can see that anyone who belongs to the test group, you can control it right here. So the, the anyone in this test group is going to be able to read and write to that test directory. And then we're going to click save and then we're going to apply and then yes. Okay, all that complicated stuff, what it did is it delegated permissions to a certain, like it narrowed the permissions to a certain user. So if we create another share and it's under another uh, it's under another like group that we created. Now that person is not going to be able to see what that other patient is able to see because they belong to different groups. And this is really important for managing data. And it's a little bit complicated and I didn't do a really good job, but it that's basically what we just did. So let's go back to our files and now we should be able to log in with John's credential. We are a registered user. We are John and then we are a password and then connect. And now we have access to that share and we can upload stuff. Let's go here. Let's go to, um, where do we go? Documents. Um, yeah, let's take all of this stuff and paste it in this test directory. And it's moving pretty fast. Um, I know that we're going to be limited by the inputs and outputs of the Raspberry Pi itself. For example, this is a virtual machine inside of my MacBook and is connected via Wi-Fi. And then the actual Raspberry Pi is connected to a 2.5 gigabit network. And even though it's connected to a 2.5 gigabit network, it's that we are limited by one gigabyte of inputs and outputs of the Raspberry Pi 5. So in theory, the max that we can get is 100 megabytes per reads and writes of transfer. And the reason this is super slow is because I'm connected on Wi-Fi on this network. Um, it's probably not going to get much better, unfortunately, but we do have a NAS. So that's important. So before closing out the video, I wanted to showcase what the speed was if you use a wire connection. Right now, this is a wire connection and we're transferring a bunch of Linux files. And as you can see, we're getting about 70 to 71 megabytes of reads and writes. This is basically on par with the theoretical limit of 100 megabytes of reads and writes. So 
because the Raspberry Pi has a one gigabit connection, it's going to be limited, and this is pretty good. So there's a substantial difference when using Wi-Fi from a device to using a wire connection.